Um, <clears throat> so let's open up with a word of prayer, and then uh, we'll have uh, Pastor Raul come and join us, and we'll, we'll play some music and then get into the service. All right, Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We just glorify you, Lord. We, we magnify you. Father, we, we just thank you for you are the giver of all things. You are the life of all things, Lord. And, and as uh, you've given me a word, you're the love of all things. Um, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for, for your presence. We thank you for being here with us. Lord, we thank you for enlightening us, Lord, to, um, to come and worship you uh, live at this place. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. Father, we thank you for each person here, Lord, that you would just minister to to them, Lord, that you would touch their lives in, in, in the way that only you can. Father, we know that your Holy Spirit is here, Lord, that uh, that has uh, has indwelled us, Lord, quickened us, and is sealing us until the day you come, Lord. But, but we pray that your Holy Spirit would illuminate our eyes and our hearts, Lord, to your word, Lord, that's going to go for, forth and uh, and that you would minister to us, Lord. Father, we just pray for those that are coming. Lord, those that are out on the streets that, that may hear about us, Lord, that have heard about us, we just pray that you would draw them in, Lord, so that we could be fishers of men that you've called us to be. And Father, we just pray for uh, salvation today, Lord, upon your people, Lord, upon your, your, your flock. Father, we just pray that you would bring in souls to your kingdom, Lord, so that no one would have to go through that great tribulation. Father, we give you praise and honor. And we just thank you for all things that you're doing, Lord. We thank you and we give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Check one, two. Let's all stand if you want. If you want to stay seated, we're going to do that. But we're going to celebrate this morning's uh, beginnings. And uh, what a blessing it is. You know, as we are preparing, the verse kept coming to my mind is, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against me. And that's what God's doing. God's still building His church. New churches, renewing churches. And so this morning we're going to rejoice in that. Oh, come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at his feet. He has done great things. 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 He has done great things.
you in the class box. We love you in this place. We worship you. Bless your name. In Jesus' name. celebrate Jesus this morning. We have so much to be grateful for. And not only has God done so much for us, but He's not done. If we're still breathing, God is still working in our lives. And thank God that we are still alive. And even in this crazy, crazy season of coronavirus, can't stop us, amen? We just got to keep going forward. If you want to be seated, you can do that. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness, you have filled Thank you, God, that you're 
promises are yea and amen. And we can stand on your promises. And that though the world is tumbling out of control at times, we know we are taken care of by you, by your grace. We love you in Jesus' name.
Jesus putting up with us people that are just prone to be not who you would want us to be, but saved by your grace, loved with all that you have for humanity. You love us as individuals. We praise you. We worship you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Turn around and greet somebody with a fist bump. Or if it's a close family member, give a hug.
your, um, your in unity. Of course, we want to be safe, and we don't want to be oblivious to the, uh, to the things that are going on, but we want to make sure that we still come together. Amen. So, um, let's see. You got number, number 16 in unity. Um, so, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes? All right. All right. I'm sure I don't need this anyway, right? <laughs> But we're trying to capture it for recording purposes, um, and, um, and that way we can uh, we can keep it for a lifetime. Amen. So uh, yeah, kill, kill the subs on that so we don't get that wrong. Um, all right. So as we always do, we want to open up with a word of prayer, and then we'll get right into the word. Amen. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord. Father, I pray that I would decrease. And that you would increase, Lord. Let your words uh, permeate my thoughts, Lord, and my, my mind, and then ultimately my lips, Lord, so that I can speak your word, and that I can speak your word for someone in, in this season, in due season, for them, Lord. Father, I pray that you would just allow us to not be hearers of the word, Lord, but to, to be doers also. And we give you praise, and we give you honor. We invite you into this place, into our hearts, Holy Spirit, and we just ask that you would illuminate us, and that you would illuminate our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, um, what I'd like to share today is, is a good word. Uh, any, anything in the word is good, amen, but, uh, but I believe God has given, given me a word for you today, for us, uh, for me, um, and uh, it is, it's called God's Love is Forever. Amen. And it's so uh, such of a cliche now to say God loves you. It's such of a cliche to, to hear that and to go along with that phrase and that statement. Uh, but, but what I endeavor to bring to you today is that God loves you. And I want to show you God's love from His perspective. A lot of times we see God's love from our own perspective. And we even see each other's love from our own perspective. Amen. But I want to show you God's love from His perspective. All right, uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3, and this will be my text, the opening text, which is, uh, we're going to be reading in the King James Version, and, uh, and it goes like this, the Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love, therefore, with love and kindness, I have drawn you. So an everlasting love is God's perspective of love. Amen. He doesn't just love you uh, for a moment. He doesn't just love you for a time. He doesn't just love you while you're here on earth. Amen. But He loves you from an everlasting standpoint. And because of that, He draws us with His love and kindness. Amen. Uh, I'm sure you've heard that, you know, a little honey can, uh, can, can draw you or can guide you. Well, God has a lot of honey. Amen. He drives, he draws us with love and kindness. He loves you till the wheels fall off. Amen. Yes. That's a that's a, a, a statement that, that we hear a lot, but but it's true. God's in this for life. Amen. And, and he shares with us here in, in the text, um, Jeremiah 31, 3. The love has appeared, the Lord has appeared uh, of us, I'm sorry, of old to me, saying, Yes, I love you with an everlasting love. So God's love is everlasting, it's unchanging, it, uh, it never fails, amen, and it's there for you, true and true, uh, ride or die, amen. Now I know some of you have uh, experienced love today. Uh, you may have um, love of, the love of a spouse, amen, you, you absolutely have the love of your parents. You may even say you love your your kids, um, you know, your neighbor, uh, those those people that you uh, hold dear to your heart, you say you love them, and you express that, amen, with your words, with your kindness, amen, but but if you, if you really want to get down to it, you feel the love, and, and that's really what you're looking for, is, is feeling love, right? You're looking to be loved. You're here, we're all here to be loved. If you don't feel love, you're going to go somewhere where you can get love. Amen? And, you know, studies have shown that babies, when they're born, if they're not loved, if they, if they don't have 
compassion showed to them. If they don't have the, the stroke of their, their mother or father, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the constant care uh, that we give our, our babies when they're born, some of them die. Amen. Some, some babies actually don't make it because they uh, fail to thrive, because they don't get the love that you know, they need to, in order to thrive. Amen? And so, uh, so that's what, that's what we, we do on, on a regular basis is, is we share our love. But, you know, it's really, from our perspective, it's what we get out of that, that sharing, out of that relationship. Right? You, you, uh, you get love coming back from, from a baby, maybe not so much a toddler because they're, they're just here to get, you know, feed me, feed me change me, change me, what, whatever they need is what you do, right? You're there to serve them, amen, and, and um, we've certainly gone through that two times in our lives <laughs> with uh, my wife and I, our, our boys, they're, they're old and out of the house now, but, uh, you know, they uh, have, have dominated our lives for, you know, 18, well, it doesn't stop at 18, right? It, it goes on, it goes on, and, uh, and, and so... <laughs> So we, we have the opportunity to, to share love, to, to be loved, and, and to give love. But, you know, love goes deeper, deeper, way deeper than just the love of a child or what kind of love that you feel from a relationship. Love goes deeper in God's perspective. And, and I want to challenge you with a question is, who will you die for? Because with, with God, love is about giving it your all. Love is about, you know, being all in. Amen. As as you would, we were in uh, in that city uh, a little a little uh, what is it uh, east uh, east of us here Vegas where you you know you go and you you put your money on the table and though we didn't gamble I'll just put that out there we didn't gamble but we were observing a lot of people that did gamble and in some cases you know they would hold back you know they they put put some out they would. Uh, they would cash out when it was uh, getting too risky, right? It, it, it was uh, just, you know, reserved. Um, but, but very rarely you see someone go and, and put it all in. That's, that's what God does with us. Is he, he puts it all in. He puts everything into, into you and I with his love that he shares. Amen? Amen. 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 The, the scripture that, uh, that, that shows that is, and it's familiar to all of us. In John chapter 3, verse 16, you can all probably quote it, but it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not, I'm sorry, shall have everlasting life. Amen. So it's important to read for yourself because I'll slip up and say a wrong word or two. <laughs> but God, uh, God loves you. And uh, and that and that so much that whosoever believes in him uh, shall have everlasting life. Amen. Another scripture in Romans chapter five, and we'll go through this one really quickly. Verse six through eleven, it says, "For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Uh, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet." Perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled through the death of his son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Amen? So, so God tells us uh, who he would die for. Amen? And, and I ask who you would die for uh, earlier. Would you die for your, your wife, your husband? Would you die for your kids, your family? Would you even die for your neighbor? Would you die for someone that, that, uh, that's dear to you or maybe that, that's near to you? Amen. But, but Jesus came and he died for us all. 
Amen. While we were sinners, the Bible says, while we were without strength to even worship Him, Jesus came and died for us so that we won't have to go through uh, the wrath that is to come, so that we could be reconciled to the Father through through the Son, through His Son Jesus. Amen. Isn't that amazing that Jesus would care enough for us when we were yet His enemy, when we were yet in our sin, when we were uh, striving against Him, Jesus came and, and, and provided for us. He loved us so much that He came and He went all in for us. He didn't hold back. He could have uh, He could have came off that cross, Amen, and, and and wiped out every enemy that He had. He could have wiped out every enemy that you had, uh, but but He knew that there was a work to be done. He knew that God's work was to die for the world, Amen. And, and that includes you and I here. Um, so it's amazing that, that, uh, that God loves us and that God loves us so much that He's willing to give it all. In John chapter 15, verse 12 through 15, it says, This is my commandment. Now this is Jesus telling them um, uh, about His love. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Uh, greater love has no one than this. That, that uh, then to lay down one's life for his friends. Okay? So you are my friends if you do whatever I command. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known to you. Amen? So Jesus describes there that, you know, that not only uh, did he come and die for his servants, but he came and died for his friends. And when he calls you his friend, that is something. That is nothing to, uh, to, to, to shake a stick at, as they say. That is nothing to, to be casual about. When Jesus calls you his friend, amen, he's going to die for you. He's going to put it all on the line for you so that you can be with him. Amen. And, and when you're with someone, you want to be there. You want to be with them. You want to know that they're with you. You want to know that it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what storm comes your way. You're there with them or he's there with you. Amen. And that's Jesus. That's a, that's a yes. glimpse of Jesus. It yes. doesn't matter what COVID does. It doesn't matter what sickness comes our way. Amen. God is with you. Amen. God can help you through the storm. Amen. Even through the sickness, God is with you. Amen. And even, even through death, as we'll demonstrate here, God is with you. Amen. So giving, giving your life to Jesus, giving your, uh, your heart to the Lord and accepting Him as your friend. Amen. It, it gives you eternal security. It gives you security that goes beyond what, uh, what a friend does, what, what you and I may do. Amen. And, and that's the challenge here is do we love God uh, the way He loves us? Are we willing to to die for Him, amen, as He died for us. And, and that's the challenge, amen? So God pursues our love. He pursues uh, you in His love. And, and I want to demonstrate that through uh, Luke chapter 15. And this is the prodigal son, amen? Uh, the, the, the prodigal son, as you know, swindled all of uh, his wealth that, that he received from his father. Amen. One day he woke up and, and lost his mind. He says... You know, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> I want to move on, and, but I want all my inheritance. I want all that you have for me, so give it to me now. And, and the father was gracious and said, okay. Uh, he, he gave him what was coming to him, and, and, the, and the son left. Broke the father's heart. Amen? It broke his heart, but he knew that he had to let him go because if he didn't, uh, the son would get away somehow or do something reckless. But, but uh, so the son took off and left and spent all the wealth that he gained. He spent it all on, on lavish living. He, he went to Vegas and, and, <laughs> and bet it all. He, he just lost it all. Ended up, um, as they, they would, in, in, you know, working in a farm or working to, uh, to, just, to just eat. Amen. And... Uh, he ended up eating what, what he fed the animals, which, uh, you know, they, they were eating better than he was at the time. But, uh, but uh, 
he came to his senses, and in Luke chapter 15, verse 20, it says, And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great far off, his father saw him. Amen. His father saw him. Excuse me. His father saw him and had compassion. And he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. So, you know, I don't know what, what kind of language they, they spoke back in that, in that time, but have you ever seen someone fall on someone's neck? <laughs> you know? Did he put him in a chokehold and say, okay, you're back, you're going to stay? No, he didn't. He fell, he ran, he fell, he grabbed him with everything he had. Amen. He grabbed him, he loved his son, and he welcomed him in. In verse 21, it says, And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe. Put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry for my son was dead and is alive again and he was lost and is found and they begin to be merry. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful story of reconciliation? Yes. Isn't that an awesome yeah. thing that, that this, this man's father received him back even though he hurt his heart even though he split the family if you would he uh, he took the wealth that that they had stored for him to live for the rest of his life they, they he took it and just wasted it but the father saw him and and ran to him amen and that's what God does to you and I he runs to you he ran to you by coming to the cross he came from his throne on high and became a man Amen. And he went to the cross and died for you. He ran and fell on your neck, if you would. And, and, and his, he gave it all for you. He put it all in. And, and he did just as, as he described in this parable, where the father gave the, uh, the son his robe back. He restored him to his graces. He gave him a ring, which represented authority and power. And he put shoes on his feet. Amen. So he didn't have to walk around. Uh, touching the earth and, and barefoot, amen, and, and, and he even threw a celebration. Oh my God, isn't there going to be a big celebration for us one day? Amen. The Lord is preparing a place for us, amen, and, and where he is, we will be also someday, amen, and that someday is going to be a celebration that is like no other, amen. It's, it's when Jesus comes back for his church, amen, and we're going to all be with him, and we're going to celebrate. So this this story represents that, that celebration. They threw a feast for days, amen, for, uh, for a time, and they began to be married. So God chases after you. God loves you forever, amen. And, and when he restores you, he restores you for good. It's not just until you, uh, until you do something that he doesn't like. It's not just right. until, you know, something goes wrong that he doesn't like. Amen. God is merciful. With love and kindness has he drawn you. Amen. And, and he'll keep you with love and kindness. Amen. He, he, uh, he doesn't get mad when you when you slip and, and fall one once or twice. Amen. He, he knows how to dust you off and clean you up. Amen. He wants to keep you in forever uh, in, in, his, uh, in his bosom. He wants to keep that robe on you. He wants to keep that ring on you and that sandal, those sandals on you. Amen. So he's not going to just toss you out and, and put you aside. That's not to say that, that we shouldn't strive to live a clean life, amen, but, but we have a God that, serve, that we serve that's greater than our sin, amen. It's, he's greater than our mix-ups and our, our mishaps, amen. amen. So you might say, um, after all, hearing all this, what is love, all right? Love, as we define it in, in Webster, uh, whoever that guy is that, that thinks he knows everything. <laughs> uh, it says, uh, one of the definitions says, a feeling of strong or constant affection for a person. Amen. That's the, the first way love, love is defined. Uh, number two is attraction that includes sexual desire, the strong attraction felt uh, by 
people who are romantically, uh, who are who have a romantic relationship, uh, a, a declaration of love, amen. And, and the third way it's defined is a person who love, a person you love, uh, in a romantic way, amen. So, so these are the way. This is the way that the world defines love. This is the way that Webster defines love, amen. But, but, uh, but God has a way of defining love. And, and we're gonna we're gonna share that as well. Okay, love is is an action more than just a saying. So it's more than what you say uh, when when you hang up the phone and you know you're saying goodbye, I love you, which is a common thing, and, and that's great. Say that, do that, amen. But love is what happens when you hang up the phone. Love is what happens when you are, are having you know dinner, when you're having issues, when you when you have situations. Love is when you run to your, your, your mate, not just for romantic or sexual desires, but love is, is when they need you the most. You're there for them. Amen. Love is doing anything, doing, and the emphasis is on doing anything that it takes, amen, to, to make your, your, uh, your, uh, your relationship work, anything that it takes to make your spouse, your partner, uh, the person that you love happy amen so love is doing love is is actively involvement not just saying not just uh flapping your lips amen but it's it's uh it's getting involved rolling up your sleeves and doing what's needed amen to to make the relationship work amen god did what was needed to make the relationship work between man and god amen between you and god he did what was needed and he continues to do that. Now, when you look at the Bible and how the Bible defines love, amen, and, and there, there is, uh, there's, there's all sorts of words in the Bible that talks about love. Uh, I'm going to focus on three words, and, and those words are, are in the New Testament, and it's the Greek uh, word for love, amen. Uh, so we're doing the word st study on love. Uh, I, I truly... Honestly, before I did this, I thought there were only three words, but there are about nine different words in the Greek only for love. And but we're only going to focus on three of them. The first one is eros, which uh, we kind of the world uh, Webster defines love as the erotic love, uh, erotic love between a couple. Amen. It's the it's the flesh. It's the outward. It's the what what can you do for me? Uh, what have you done for me lately? Kind of love. Uh, it's the surface love, amen. But the Bible uh, talks about that in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 8 and 9. And we won't read those, but you can read them for on your own. It talks about it's better than it's better to marry than it is to burn in in uh, lust, in in, uh, in you know compassion and whatever. Um, yeah, we we uh, when I was growing up, it was called lust, right? You, you're attracted to the one or to someone, and and that's the eros. That's the first stage of love that you that you uh, that you encounter. Probably more of an of an emotion, of a feeling, but it's surface. Amen. The next word is phileo, which is uh, defined in, as a friendship love. It's a it's a love that you extend to your friends that is uh, somewhat personal. It's not in depth, it's not something that that you can take to the bank uh, and and, and uh, you know and cash it. But nevertheless, you know you might get uh, a, a glass of water. Uh, in this case, the way it was it was uh, the, the one example of phileo that I want to describe is in Mark chapter 14, verse 14, where uh, Jesus was friends with Judas, Judas Iscariot. Uh, the, the gentleman that betrayed him, uh, Judas came and expressed phileo love to Jesus when he betrayed him. He gave Jesus a kiss, amen. And that was the sign that he gave to the uh, to the to the army that the man that I kissed, the one that I kissed, he's the one that that you should take away. He's the one that is uh, this Jesus that's causing all these all these problems for you. So Jesus being right there in the midst of the 12 disciples, right close to Jesus, he shared phileo love with him, 
and he kissed Jesus. So phileo love is kiss, is a kiss, is a friendship love. It's a love that is superficial, but yet uh, you get close enough to kiss, or in this case, to, to dagger, to, to use one of those small daggers and, and jab it uh, in, in Jesus' side. And he, he betrayed Jesus with a kiss, and that was phileo love. Now, the, the word that is mostly used in the New Testament is called agape love. And we hear that, that word a lot. It's used a lot in, in the Bible. But when we see the Bible, it's just used, it's just said love. You know, for God so loved the world. Amen. Uh, that's agape love. When you, when you give unconditional love to someone, when you share love as God shares love uh, with you, that's the real, the real love that you can take to the bank, that you can, that you can cash it. And, and, and uh, if you would, Jesus came and, and gave us full credit. Amen. He, he gave us life. Amen. So, so God took our sin and put it on Jesus. Jesus took his righteousness and put it on us. And so when God sees us, he sees righteousness. He sees, he sees Jesus. Amen. So we have full credit. That's love. Amen. Amen. And how many of you have ever had your bills wiped out? And uh, and you uh, you had a clean slate to, 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 to live and to breathe, Amen. That person loved you when they when they paid off your bills, Amen. Uh, even if it was just one bill, <laughs> Amen. But but Jesus paid it all. He paid off all your debts. He paid off all of your sins, and He allows you to now be seen as as He is seen by the Father, which is pure and holy, Amen. So. Agape love is the kind of God kind of love that, that you want to aspire to, to have and you want to aspire to give. Amen? Amen. Uh, God uh, shares that agape love with us uh, in three ways I want to share. Three ways. He loves us uh, yesterday, amen, in the beginning. So before you were even here, before you were even thought of before you were twinkling your father's eye as they say <laughs> God loved you he showed his love towards you before um, you you even came to this earth amen in Genesis 1 uh, and 1 I want to uh, go a little deep here for for you uh, Hebrew scholars amen uh, God demonstrated his love for you in the first three words of Genesis 1 Genesis chapter 1 is the first book of the Bible, amen, and the first three words, if you can read Hebrew, if you can read uh, that awesome language that, that is spoken, um, that the Bible was written in, and you can, you can dissect those words, uh, Jesus, it showed right there in, in the first three words, in the beginning, uh, when, you, when you read it from a Hebraic standpoint, it shares Jesus coming to the cross, dying for your sins. He showed his love for you right at the beginning. Amen? And that word that, that represents in the beginning is called Bereshit. Bereshit is broken up into, into some uh, diagrams, as you see on the screen. Um, the, uh, the bet is the first uh, letter that's represented in the, in, in the beginning. If you know Hebrew, they... The, he, the, the, the Jews read from right to left. So that first symbol there on the far right is bet, which represents the house. Uh, the second word is resh, which represents uh, the, uh, the highest person or man's, man's head. Uh, Aleph is the third letter there, which represents God. Uh, so in a sense, God's son, uh, the, the house being the house of David, Jesus coming through the house of David, through the line of David as the king, and being the highest, uh, highest man that was that was that walked the earth. Jesus was and is the the, uh, the baddest dude that ever walked the earth. Amen. There's been some some pretty uh, some pretty awesome people. If you if you think about people that we know now, uh, whether it's because of wealth, whether it's because of uh, talent, uh, whether it's because of strength. Whatever uh, that person is and has, a, has attained in their lives in your, from your perspective, 
It doesn't even scratch the surface of what Jesus did and who he was and what he did uh, coming, uh, coming into this world and dying for us. So a left is, is God. Uh, the next word is sheen, which represents destruction or teeth, as you would. Kind of looks like a, like a, a comb uh, or a shovel. Um, when I had hair, that's what I used to comb my hair with. <laughs> but uh, but it, it's a, uh, it represents destruction or teeth, which means, you know, death. And then, um, maybe that's why I'm bald. <laughs> uh, the, the next one is Yod, which uh, talks about the hand. Um, and then the last word is the cross, a uh, tav. So when you put that all together, um, the, uh, the message that, that we get from a pictorial standpoint of that is this, uh, it represents the Son of God uh, will be destroyed with his hands on the cross. So if you were able to read that and, and, and you understand Hebrew, uh, that first, those first three letters or the first three words of the Bible, when you translate it into, uh, back into Hebrew, represents Jesus coming uh, and dying on the cross for you and I. So, so God loves us. He loved us from the beginning, uh, knowing that all this was going to happen. It was all prophesied and, and, and put in, even in just those first three words of the Bible, of the, of the very first book of the Bible, the very first chapter, the very first three words. Um, Jesus demonstrates his love for us. Jeremiah chapter 1 Verse uh, 5, it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to this nation. Amen. And he was talking to Jeremiah right there. But God knows each and every one of us, each and every one of us before we were born, while we were being formed in our mother's womb. God knew us and he has a plan for us. He has a specific gift for us. It may be prophecy. It may be uh, whatever God has lead, led you to do uh, needs to be God leading you, not someone else leading you. Don't, don't lean on someone else to lead you to do God's work. Lean on God to do God's work. Amen. And he will supply like he's done here at Ephesians. He supplied, amen, he supplied the place. He supplied the chairs. He supplied the pulpit. Amen. We got this pulpit that was given to us. Uh, it, was, it was ours before we even knew it. <laughs> Amen. But, uh, but God is just a blessing. He's blessed us tremendously, and, uh, and He's blessed you. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 uh, through 17, it says, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me through His grace to reveal His Son in me, that I might preach him among the Gentiles. I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood, meaning I didn't go and see if it was okay with, you know, with Peter and, and, and uh, John and the, and the other disciples. Uh, Paul went and prayed, amen. He went and sought the Lord to make sure that this was God telling him to do what he was doing. Because as you know, Paul was, a, was an enemy of the church. He was someone that uh, that the, the Christians were scared of, amen, because he would put you to death, he would beat you or do whatever, but uh, when God called him and, and knocked him off his high horse, amen, and, and gave him um, the, the ministry to preach to the Gentiles, amen, he didn't, he didn't go and, and see if this was, was true and, and I should be doing this by man. He went to God and, and prayed and prayed and fasted. Amen. So God loves you in the past. Amen. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, before the whole world was even created, God loved you. Amen. He loves you today. And I want to show you that in John chapter 3. It says in verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. So that, you know, He's giving that to us now. You, you're here and, and, and you may not know the Lord as your personal Savior. Amen. God has bestowed love upon you now. Amen. Because you're here. Because you are listening to my voice on, on uh, the internet. Because, you know, you are still breathing. You are still able to, to, uh, to, uh, to maintain, to walk, to live. 
Amen. God is bestowing his love on you. Amen. So he loves you today. He loves you right now. Amen. And he loves you in the future. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 35, it says, Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yea, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So God loves you in the future. He loves you right now. He loved you in the past. He loves you right now. He loves you in the future so much that he's declaring that nothing can separate you from his love. Nothing can separate your love from him. Amen. When you give your heart to Jesus, amen, it's for good. Amen. And, and there's nothing that can separate that. So we have trust in him. We have uh, confidence in him. We know that, that we won't be let down. We know that, um, that we can count on his love. Amen. 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 So, um, the, uh, the attraction of love, amen, is found in, in uh, Corinthians chapter 13. And, and if you ever uh, are wondering, am I showing love? Am I, am I, uh, am I in tune with, with the Lord? Am I in tune with, with what I should be doing? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8, it says, Love suffers long. Isn't God love long-suffering? Amen. If you think about how long it took you to come to your senses that God loves you, amen, it, it, you know, it only takes a miracle when you think about it. I, I know I was, uh, I was in my, uh, uh, my late teens, amen, when the Lord finally got my attention, amen, being raised in church, you know, we, we, uh, we grew up in churches, as, as you may, may uh, have read on our website, that, um, uh, you know, my, my grandfather was a pastor. Uh, my mother was a pastor's kid, and she sang and, and did work for the Lord. Amen. But we came up in church. We, we, did, uh, we did that thing where, you know, every Sunday you are in church. I don't care why or what's going on with you. You are in church, and you are going to Sunday school. You are going to, you know, you're going to sing in the choir. You're going to do whatever it was because uh, my granddad was the pastor. Amen, and and, uh, and and he uh, he was uh, actually he was really the first. Well, well, aside from my mom and my sisters, the first one that I really uh, felt love for when he died. You know, I wanted to be there with him. You know, I was I remember at his funeral, my granddad was there in the casket, and I was like, no, I want to go with him. You know, where is he? And uh, I didn't understand, but I got a glimpse of, of of what love was was when that separation happened. Because, you know, I was his road dog. I was there with him all the time. When my sisters were at school, I, you know, I was too young to go to school. And so I was hanging out with Paw Paw. We called him Paw Paw. And uh, he, he, was our, he was our guy. He was our rock of Gibraltar. Amen. And uh, he took me everywhere. He showed me how to, how to do many things, you know, just as a little boy. And, uh, and so love is long-suffering. He... he uh, he was long-suffering with me. Even though I was young, he taught me the way. He showed me the way. Amen. And then when we grew up, we, we moved here to uh, California. And we went to a church called, guess what? Ephesians Church. <laughs> That's where we got the Ephesians Church name from. Was uh, the church that we, we grew up in. As Well, when we moved here, I was about nine years old. And that was the first church that the Lord led us to. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it was of another denomination. But, uh, but nevertheless, it was a, a, a word-preaching, Holy Ghost-filled church that we know the Lord was there. And we were there every Sunday, sometimes Wednesdays and Fridays, 
uh, twice on Sundays uh, if I want to tell the truth. And then maybe even three times, right? YPWW, remember that? Yeah, uh, young people willing workers, right? That was where the young people went and you learned about the Lord. Um, it, it, uh, it was great times and that, that was where we, uh, we grew up. Ephesians was, uh, was a ministry that was thriving and, uh, and we were right there in the middle of it. And it's no longer around, but, but God has given us the vision to, to spark that and do a new thing. Amen? Amen? Do a new thing in this community. Yes. Do a new thing in the world. Amen? And, and who knows what God has in store for us. Yeah. Amen? We're here right now in these, these walls. Amen? And, and praise the Lord for them. My sister graciously opened up the, the, uh, the building for us to, to have service here. She's here normally during the week. Uh, so if you come by, it may look a little different. It may have, it may not have the signs up. Amen. You, you may have some things you can buy. In fact, the, the posters or the paintings on the wall are all her work. Amen. She's a very talented artist. She puts her heart and soul into what she does. And uh, she's, she's shaking her fist at me now. I wasn't supposed to, I wasn't supposed to pull a plug, but, but, uh, but we bought a couple of those and, and they're in our house. Uh, she's a very talented painter, painter uh, artist, and she also lives by doing hair. So, ladies, if you need your hair done, men, men too. Yeah, men too. I used to come to her, but uh, but the, the jeans got to me, and uh, I no longer needed her services. But uh, but she's here during the week, and then on the weekends, uh, we we we're here. And God has opened up this, this building for us to, to do a new thing and uh, carry on the name, uh, carry on His name. There's nothing in the name that was in that other church other than that it was the name, amen. But the name of Jesus, amen, prevails. And that's what uh, He built His rock on, uh, which is He built, Jesus says, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell uh, cannot prevail against it. It's not on a name. It's not in a name, amen. Uh, but it's in uh, the rock, which is Jesus. Amen. And if, as long as we're standing on his word and we're preaching his word, we're going out in the communities and we're serving people, uh, which is showing love. Service is showing love. It's showing that agape love that God has uh, demonstrated to us. Then uh, we'll be in the will of God. Amen. But love is long suffering. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up, amen. Uh, does not behave unruly. Does not speak in its uh, uh, of its own, or does not seek its own. I'm sorry. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. Does not rejoice uh, in iniquity and sin, but it does rejoice in the truth, amen. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things endures all things love never fails it says but if there were uh, if there are prophecies if there are things that you're seeking after if you're looking for a word uh, in season and out of season those words are going to fail uh, they will fall it says whether there are tongues uh, they all cease they will cease whether they uh, whether their knowledge so all knowledge will vanish away but love never fails so there's a measuring stick for you to use if you're uh, looking to see if you're uh, acting in love, if you're, if you're operating in love, if you are a loving person, if you, uh, if you are giving off love vibes, if you are uh, uh, receiving love, amen, there's the measuring stick for you. Uh, love never fails, amen? So what is our response to God's love? Um, God, you know, is self-sufficient. He's all sufficient. He doesn't need anything from us. He doesn't need our love. Amen. He doesn't need our wealth. He doesn't need our money. God is, is in himself all. He's complete. Uh, but, you know, what kind, of, what kind of life is that to, to just have it all and, and not, you know, share it with anyone? So God decided that he wanted to share his love with us. Amen. He made man. He created heavens and earth. He even created a whole um, a company of angels. Amen. And, uh, and we all, 
we all, angels included, we all have our free will. You know, we all have uh, the ability to choose love. We all have the ability to choose God. Amen. And, uh, and we know how that went with the angels, right? Uh, Lucifer was uh, one of the head angels. He was the most beautiful angel. He was uh, made with glory, with splendor. He had music. He had pipes built into him. When he, when he showed up, the light, the, the room lit up. Amen. When he showed up, the, the, you know, this music that we listen to now sounds good and it makes you uh, kind of cut a step every now and then. But when Lucifer was created, he had all that built in and a bag of chips. Amen. He was, he was the man. And, and that's what got him uh, in trouble was he was the man, he knew it, and he wanted to be the man um, like God. He wanted to be like God because God is truly the man. Amen. God is, is the one that stands with no other. Amen. He wants to be the Lord of your life. He wants you to, to radiate his goodness. He wants you to desire him and his love. Amen. But when we seek after our own love, when we seek after love, uh, amen, to, to please others, amen, it hurts God's feelings, and, you know, but he's long-suffering, as we saw in, in 1 Corinthians 13, he, he draws us with love and kindness, as we saw in Jeremiah, amen, and, and he knows how to handle us, amen, but, but the one thing you don't want to do is reject God, because when you reject God, you're going to get the whole world against you, amen, you're going to get God uh, the whole universe, you're going to get the whole, the whole ball of wax against you. So I encourage you to, uh, to receive Christ, to receive God's plan for love, God's plan for salvation. Amen. In Romans chapter, uh, chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, amen, he talks about how to receive Christ. Amen. And it's, uh, it says uh, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. The Lord loves you uh, so much that he provides a plan for you to, uh, to accept him so that you don't wind up rejecting him by, by ignoring him, by not giving your life to him. Amen. And, uh, and he provides that plan for you. Amen. To do that. He also uh, tells us to love our neighbors. Uh, he says in 1 John, how can you say you love God uh, who you've never seen, but your brother who you see every day, you know, you, uh, you don't love him. You, you, you have a problem with him. Amen. He wants you to share that love. He wants you to, to, uh, to give love as he's given to you. That's God's perspective. Amen. God is all in with his love with you. He wants you to be all in with your love to him and with your love to your neighbors. Amen. Uh, there was a gentleman that was uh, an attorney in, uh, in the Bible and he was there and he wanted to test Jesus. And this is my last scripture, Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 25. Um, it says, Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall we do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, what is written in the law? Uh, he's an attorney. He should know the law. He should know the, the word of God. He should know also the, the statutes of man. But he says, what, do, what does it say in the law? What is your reading of it? What, how do you interpret the law? Amen. And, and the gentleman stood up and said, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And your neighbor as yourself. Amen. So that's a, a part of the Ten Commandments, right? You, that's familiar to us from watching uh, Charleston Hester. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> from reading the Bible and seeing the Ten Commandments. Amen. Jesus referenced the Ten Commandments. The first uh, commandment there, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, uh, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. Do this and you will experience my love. Do this and you will have eternal life. And then Jesus began to say, um, uh, began to show this man's true heart, this man's uh, 
uh, phileo love, right? He showed him uh, his heart. Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down uh, from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothes, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. All right? So Jesus is painting the picture, and he's showing us uh, who is your neighbor. He's showing us how we can show love uh, as, as a as a person that has love within us. And Jesus says uh, here, uh, Now by chance a certain priest came down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Amen? He saw this man that was in the road, half dead, probably looked like a homeless person, probably looked like he you know, was on uh, his last leg or down on his luck. So the priest you know, the main guy that should have showed love and compassion went on the other side of the road and walked past him. Likewise, a Levi, uh, this, this gentleman was uh, one of the guys that was a teacher in the, in the Word. Uh, a Levi, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed on the other side also. A certain Samaritan, this was a, this was a, a Jew, which uh, the Samaritans were uh, kind of the outcast of the Jew sect, the Jewish sect. Uh, he was not even welcomed in that particular area, but but the Samaritan, as he journeyed, came, and when he when, and when he was, and where he was, when he saw him, he had compassion. Amen. He had compassion on this man that had been beaten, stripped, and left to die. So he went and bandaged his wounds. He poured on oil and wine, and he set him uh, on his animal, brought him to an inn. And took care of him. So he basically shared uh, what this man needed, which was help. He needed a hospital. He needed someone to care for his wounds so he wouldn't get infected. He needed someone to take care of him and let, and so that he can, um, um, so that he can recover. Amen. He needed a safe place and he needed help getting there. Amen. How many of us need help in our lives getting to a safe place? How many of us need help in our lives getting? getting it all together. Amen. And Jesus did just that. Amen. He came and he, and he gave us life. Amen. But this man poured wine uh, and oil together and bandaged up his wounds and he, and he took him to a place, a hotel, and the next day he, he departed and he, and he gave the uh, hotel owner uh, two denarii, um, which uh, from a previous study I found that that's um, that represents um, like a, a, a two days of wages, amen. And and um, and, uh, and you know it was significant back then. But he he set up provisions for this man, and he gave that money to the innkeeper and said, "Take care of him, and whatever you spend, I'll repay." So Jesus said to this this lawyer, "Which of these do you uh, think was the the neighbor of him who fell amongst thieves?" And, and that scripture goes on. I encourage you to read that. But uh, the, the man says, yeah, it was, it was the, the Samaritan. And so Jesus challenged him to go and sell all you have. Give it to the poor. Amen. Help someone when you see them in the street, you know, lying there. Uh, show love. Show agape love. Amen. Don't just settle for phileo love. Or don't look at what you can get from this person from a, uh, an Euro standpoint. Um, those are all uh, superficial loves, but share your agape love with your brother, with your sister, with your neighbor, amen? And, uh, and then with God, amen? Because God wants to know that you love him as well, and God wants to uh, share in, in, in love with, with him, uh, in communion with him, amen? So uh, that's what I wanted to share with you today. I wanted to encourage each of us to, to just go beyond the mask. Amen. <laughs> that, that I should I should clone that. I, I or um, what's what's the phrase? Uh, copyrighted. copyrighted. Yeah. Um, be, go beyond the mask. Amen. Show love for someone. Show compassion. It doesn't hurt to put on the mask. It doesn't hurt to protect yourself. Amen. But don't let that stop you from showing love. Don't let that shop stop you from caring for someone and uh, and showing agape love. Uh, don't be superficial. Don't show phileo love or eros love. Um, they, they're important, but 
that agape love is where you want to be. Amen? Amen. 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 So that's the word I have for you. So if you could bow your heads, and, uh, and we're going to just extend uh, the, uh, the invitation to you. If you're out there and you don't know Jesus, uh, if you could uh, you know, just bow your heads and repeat after me. Amen. We, we're we're going to lead you into a prayer where you can uh, know the Lord for yourself. Amen. You don't, you don't have to know Him through your mother, your father, uh, your relationship with your grandparents as I did. I, I, I hung on that for as long as I could. And I was a good guy. I went to church. I, I had good parents and I even had good grandparents. But, you know, um, our relationship is one-on-one -on -one with God. And, and you can't get in, you can't get uh, forgiveness of sins by uh, leaning on someone else's uh, coattail. You have to go to Him for yourself. He set up that provision for you. He set it up for you and I. Amen. And the way you get there is, is uh, through prayer and belief. And, and, and let's, let's just do that now. So if you're there, uh, repeat after me. We won't have you come forward, but, but just repeat after me if you, if you would and you want to become a Christian, you want to give your heart to the Lord and get this eternal life that we're talking about. Amen. Say, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner in need of grace. I know that you are the Son of God and you came and died for me. Come into my life. Forgive me for my sins. Be the Lord of my life. I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. 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 While your heads are still bowed and your, your eyes are still closed, Amen. You know, when you uh, give your heart to Jesus, Amen, you uh, become a part of the family of God. You become a child of God. He's grafted you in now as, as though you were one of the children of Israel. Amen. You are now a part of the, the, the family of God. You have all the rights. You have all the the, uh, the things that, that come to you. Uh, he puts a robe on your back. He puts a ring on your finger and sandals on your feet. Amen. So you can walk proudly. Amen. But, but as you're walking, amen, you need uh, the Holy Spirit, which is the third person of the Trinity. Amen. You need the Holy Spirit, which God has poured out His Spirit upon this earth. Amen. And, uh, and, and He wants to, to dwell with you. Amen. So when you accept the Lord Jesus into your life, you get the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit all in one into your life. Amen. But but He encourages you to, to want and to desire His Holy Spirit. Amen. So that you can be filled, you can be sealed, uh, and, and, uh, and you can walk and abide in, in Him. Amen. Amen. It's difficult to, to, uh, to walk, but, but the Lord says that when you become a part of His family, and you desire the Holy Spirit that He will fill you with the Spirit. He will give you a Spirit and, and He will uh, seal you and keep you. Amen. So if you're there and you're uh, desiring to be filled with His Spirit, amen, it's a matter of just uh, asking the Lord for, for um, His Spirit to be dominant in your life, His Spirit to fill your life to, so that your cup runs over. Amen. So that you have no need... Uh, to be taught by a man, but the, the Word of God, the, the Spirit of God is within you, and He teaches you and shows you all things. Amen. He's the one that will be with you to help interpret the Word of God so that you can uh, understand it. Amen. So that you can live it, so that you can walk it. Amen. So if you're there and you want the Holy Spirit to dominate your life, amen, just, just, uh, just raise your hands. In fact, everyone, let's just raise our hands. And, and if you would, just stand. Everyone just stand. Amen. As we conclude our service, amen, uh, we're going to sing one song. But, uh, but we just want the Lord to, to fill us with His Spirit, amen, the more, amen, so that we can abide in Him and, our, and His Word abides in us. We can interpret the Word and we can know the Word, amen, and we can be led by His Spirit. So let's just raise our hands to the Lord, amen, and just... just uh, Let's just pray, amen, that, that, the good, that the good Lord, that the Lord of heaven will fill us with His Spirit and that He will keep us, amen. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for this service. We thank you, Lord, for those that have come, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for those that are that are here, that have received the Lord, for those in, in, in the internet land that have received you. Father, we just thank you, Lord. And Father, we pray, Lord, for everyone that is here, that you would pour out your spirit upon us, Lord, that you would just infill us, that you would encamp around about us, that you would, Lord, just give us your deeper knowledge, your deeper uh, sense of your word, Lord. Uh, but, but, Father, your spirit, that you would fill us, that you would give us, uh, Lord, the evidence of speaking in, in your heavenly language, Lord, that you would give us the the, uh, the anointing, Lord, that breaks every yoke, Lord, that you would give us, Lord, the, the seal of your spirit that, that would keep us walking and abiding in you, in love, forever, Lord. And we give you praise and honor, and we thank you for your spirit, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you fill us uh, as we, we uh, lift our hands to you, as we desire you, Lord. Father, we know that you're long-suffering, and we know that you are kind, Lord, and we know that you run after us, Lord. So right now we surrender to you, and we ask for your spirit to fill us, Lord. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. There's this, this one song that, that Pastor Rawls is going to sing as uh, right before we dismiss. Amen. And it's called uh, Reckless Love. It's the love that the Father has for us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Check, check, check. Hallelujah. Check, check. Guitar check. Praise you.